That was Emilio Ghilardi, the North American president of Lenovo, talking about taking risk in order to innovate. Without that risk, there is no reward. And we've got a reward right here right now with Phil Lavelle joining us. Thank you for joining us. I've been here four years. This is your first year at CES. Eye-opening experience? Very much so. And also, there is so much that you don't expect. I mean, I knew it was going to be big. I didn't know it was going to be this big. You know, the fact that it is split across town, different zones. And I mean, just like, this is one hall of, of like three, I think it is. We've got three big halls. This is one, and it will take you half a day just to walk around. What I also notice is how keen people are to get you into their booths. You walk past, and people are practically dragging you in so they can show you, so they can give you press releases. If they see you've got a camera, that's it, you're gone, because they, they want to get you to film. But there is so much to see here. You know, you've got a lot of VR, you've got a lot of really immersive stuff. There's that, you know, there's the novelty stuff. We spoke about some novelty stuff yesterday. There's the wearables, there's the things you'd expect. But of course, there is also a serious side to this because there is healthcare as well. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. There is so much money to be made through healthcare. And that is why CES is not letting that genre go untouched. And I've been taking a look. Take a look at it. There is a lot of walking around here at CES. Just look at all these people getting their daily steps in. And of course, all this exercise is great for your health, just like some of the items on show here this year. Kangrez has flown all the way to Las Vegas from China with his spoon. This one is for Parkinson's sufferers. The new generation product can interpret the different mode when you use it. For example, it, it will uh, know when you collect the food from the dish and when you transport the food into your mouth. The product, small, but the concept, huge. And a year after his company debuted its first device, Gyno is back for second helpings. Spoon V2 has a built-in internet connection. It syncs to the cloud, and it's a fraction of the size. There's many sensors in the spoon, so it, it will trace in the movement of the hand and use the motor control system to make the spoon stable. Health is absolutely huge this year, from sleep to sun exposure to sugar sensors. There are thousands of solutions to an alphabet of ailments, even some for keeping those ailments in check, providing new solutions to old problems. Like this, smartwatch and smart sensor from French firm PK Vitality. It tastes the skin and it gives a glucose reading. No invasive pins or needles needed. The pill drill helps those on lots of medication keep on top of their dosage in an ultra-connected way. My father grabs his pill bottle, takes the top off, pill in hand, water. As he puts it back down on the counter, he simply waves it in front of the device. Light diffuser ring, sound and screen indicate that he's taken his medication correctly. And then about five or ten seconds later, I get a notification wherever I am in the world, in real time, that my dad has done what he needs to do. That just came through. Very simple, no habit change required. And this company has invented an eye test that can detect autism in babies at 12 months. Current diagnoses happen at four to five years. We really felt like this could have a huge impact. It affects a large number of people and it's increasing. A lot of the technology here is from startups, but of course the big boys are here too. Like Philips, 125 years old, but moving with the times because it knows that wearable sensing technologies are now putting the patient in control. They can monitor their own health, they can go home earlier, they can connect what they measure at home with the doctors in the office or with the dentist in the office. So we, we, we put patients in the center. The fact is that lots of the devices here may never actually go on sale. Many of them are concepts, they may not get the investment, they might not capture the public imagination. But right now, that doesn't matter because the feeling here at CES is one of optimism. And there are lots of people who say their products can have a really positive effect on lives all around the world. One of the things that really struck me when I was compiling that report was the whole personal nature of this industry because of course the health tech healthcare industry is a huge multi-billion dollar industry but then you look at the fact that a lot of these products are, are complete are, are compiled by people who have experience in this so for example you've got Philips and I was saying then that Philips is 125 years old I mean they are a brand that is associated with healthcare you know they make ultrasound scanners they make huge medical equipment but then you look at these other companies like the guy who created Pill Drill that was created because he wanted to help his father uh, you look at the guy 
guys who created the Parkinson's uh, disease sufferer Spoon. That is also created through necessity. And they often say that the best business ideas, don't they, Mark, are created by people who not necessarily want to make a huge amount of money, but they just want to create something that solves a problem. And ultimately, you know, that might make money for them in the future, but there is kind of a, a personal side to it. This technology has the potential to really impact lives and, and save lives. Yeah, and also, you know, one thing that also affects all of our lives is sleep. You know, I was talking to a guy before who was a sleep doctor who was saying that the market here for sleep products is huge. And you don't really tend to think of sleep as being something that you could get so many products from. But he was saying, you know, you've not only got the sleep trackers that many of us wear, but people have got pajamas now that regulate your body temperature to make sure you get the best night's sleep. Things like that, the mattresses that move in the night to make sure that you're in the optimum position. There's so many different variables that you can think of, and it really, you know, there really is so much scope there. As well as devices that could make you dream better, too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after the last few days, I think we could probably all do with some sleep as well. That's right. Thank you, Phil, very much for that special report. Stay with us. We'll have much more, including all the day's market action. <laughs>